Cool. Thanks, Lamari. Um, yeah, I think with that, we'll go ahead and turn the time over to Micah for her presentation. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, Micah, giving a, a brief introduction of yourself for the rest of us so we can get to know you a little bit, that would be appreciated. And then, yeah, feel free to take it away. Yeah, sure, Daniel. Thanks. Um, so I'm, I'm Micah van Leuke. I have worked since, I've been working at Tino since 2021, uh, mostly as a scientist, a researcher uh, in the area of privacy enhancing technologies, and in particular the high assurance domain. So that involves uh, self-sovereign identities, for sure. Um, yeah, Tino is, is like the Dutch Research Institute for Applied Science. We have over 3,500 employees, and uh, we really serve uh, the role of kind of translator between uh, academics and businesses. Namely, we try to bring the results from academic research to uh, such a technological readiness level that it is relevant to businesses. Um, I also brought uh, with me my colleague, Kevin. Uh, Kevin, maybe you can also introduce yourself shortly. Yeah, uh, so my name is Kevin. I've been working uh, a bit shorter at TNL, only as of this month. Um, I am also working as a scientist, uh, junior scientist, uh, with um, interest in privacy and online technologies. And uh, now I'm also uh, exploring and getting to know SSI. So that's why I'm uh, here as well. Thank you. Uh, I see my colleague Peter also joined in. Maybe you also would like to uh, to introduce yourself, Peter. I think they already know you. Uh, some of them. <laughs> sure, sure. Some of uh, you may have already met me, but um, Peter Langenkamp, uh, working at TNO since 2018, also in the domain of self-sovereign identity and other privacy enhancing technologies, um, and mostly just listening in today. Yeah. So thanks for joining in, Peter. Nice to have you here. Um, so I'll start uh, sharing my uh, my presentation. Uh, can you tell me if you're seeing my screen? Looks great. Okay, good. Then I'll click the presentation mode. Um, yeah, so uh, today I'll be talking about standardization in the context of SSI. Uh, in particular, I'll show you uh, the overview that we have made. Uh, containing all this, uh, uh, all these various standards. Um, yeah, right. So before we dive into the to the details, um, I, I have a relatively short presentation, I'd say. Um, so I really want to focus on uh, on the discussion afterwards uh, about the contents, about how to continue this work. Um, so I would, yeah, be very happy to hear your input on that and feel free to ask questions at any point, uh, just a shout out. Um, so before I'll show you uh, our overview, uh, let me just uh, indicate what the, what the cause was of this overview. Um, so actually we saw a positive change in the awareness of SSI within our customer base, uh, where we first got the question, uh, what is SSI? We then got the question, what are decentralized identifiers? Uh, how do they relate to link secrets? Um, what about MDOCs, uh, verifiable credentials? And do they also work together with decentralized identifiers? Um, so actually we saw that once we can answer these questions, uh, we can get to the, like, the real question. Uh, what should I implement to be interoperable within my community? This is of course a very uh, important question. Uh, I don't have to uh, tell the diff interop working group why interoperability is important. Um, so actually we, we started focusing on um, answering these, these questions and we found that it was uh, yeah, most uh, desirable to, to make this into a graphical display. Um, so that's, that's what we did, I'll, I'll show you in a bit. And um, actually there's just so many standards that kind of confuse, um, well, our customers at least. Um, for example, there's already 162 different uh, bit methods. So it's quite overwhelming also because SSI is just such a broad technology. It has so many uh, other technologies under it. Um, so to kind of structure this, um, 
we have used the trust over IP technology stack here on the on the left hand side. Um, you're probably also uh, uh, all aware of the trust over IP model. Um, so I'll just quickly uh, run through it. Um, so in the first two layers, you really have the, the basis for the technical trust. So layer one is about public utilities. Uh, such as uh, identifiers, uh, distributed ledger technologies, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, layer two is about communications, communication between peers. So um, typically Alice and Bob are communicating, but actually their agents are communicating with each other. Uh, then layer three, um, this is where the human trust uh, comes in, because in the, uh, for example, in the credential, credential exchange, um, you have that the, that the verifier should trust the issuer in some degree uh, in order that the, uh, that the proof presented is, uh, is valid for the verifier. And then on level four, we have the application ecosystems. So I've kind of interpreted this one broadly. Uh, you will see it in the, in the overview. So let me just... Um, show the overview. You're also seeing this, right? This new screen? Yep. Yes. Great. Um, so uh, this, is, this is the overview I've been talking about. Uh, you see the four layers, the trust anchors, peer-to-peer -peer -to connections, the exchange protocols, and application ecosystems. Um, so let's just zoom in on each of these layers, like very briefly. Uh, we can dive into more details uh, uh, if it's necessary for the discussion. Um, right, so on level one, uh, we have, uh, for example, identifiers, registries, uh, the revocation method and decentralized public key infrastructure. Um, for identifiers, we have um, uh, DIDs, uh, link secrets, X509 and raw public keys can even be used as an identifier. And um, so you see this, clickable uh, things. And if you click them, you also go to the, to the spec, right? So this is the one for the, well, the part for the dip methods. Um, yeah, so then on layer two, we have uh, the peer-to-peer -peer protocols. So we actually have two flows here. Uh, namely, there's the DITCOM flow and the OpenID Connect flow. And um, OpenID Connect, can work together with uh, self-issued open ID providers, but it doesn't have to. Uh, and that's completely uses uh, the, the exchange protocol. So to indicate these flows, I've made these buttons. Uh, so here you see uh, DITCOM works with uh, DITs as well as link secrets. And then on layer three, uh, you can exchange uh, credentials using the issue credential protocol and the present proof protocol. So we did a similar thing for the OpenID Connect uh, one. So like I said, OpenID Connect can work with CEOP together. And um, then in level three, you have OpenID Connect for credential issuance. And here on the right side, the, the OpenID Connect for verifiable presentations. Um, yeah, so uh, then on level four, we have more the uh, like the privacy, the usability um, kind of aspects. So I'm not sure if that's, this is corresponding correctly to the to the toy play of four. Uh, it's kind of a broad interpretation of it, I guess. Um, so I have here the 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 um, uh, privacy uh, kind of concepts such as predicates and selective disclosure. Uh, so these both serve uh, these allow for data minimization. Uh, such that the user has more privacy. Uh, you can achieve this either technologically, so by choosing a signature algorithm that supports it. Uh, but I put them here because you can also kind of get this on a governance level um, where uh, I just as an issuer decide to, um, for example, uh, issue predicates like over 18 and over 21 um, directly to my... Um, to my uh, to to the holder, and then you don't need the, the fancy crypto, but 
as a cryptographer, that's uh, of course uh, the fun part. Um, yeah, so we also have um, inclusivity um, concepts here, such as guardianship, and namely that you can uh, take care of your uh, grandmother's uh, financial situation without her giving uh, you her private key and accessibility, uh, for example, for uh, people that cannot see, uh, it's hard to use the normal uh, wallets. Uh, so there's also some things like wallet rendering that can uh, improve inclusivity. And then here we have two kind of user friendly uh, uh, things. Uh, Chappy is um, uh, a technique to solve the NASCAR problem. So instead of seeing a million wallets and you have to pick yours out uh, to, to uh, verify a credential, for example, uh, this just shows you the, the, one, uh, the one wallet that you do have and easy is uh, our gateway such that you can use each and every wallet that you, that you would like to use. Um, yeah, so um, I was talking also about the interconnections uh, between things. So I kind of showed that already with the DITCOM and the OpenID Connect, um, but there's also uh, like general uh, connections between things. Um, for example, um, the public key that you get from your decentralized public key infrastructure, uh, you can use it for uh, generating your identifier. And uh, the private key can be stored inside your wallet uh, securely. Uh, so that's just one example. But like I said before, the wallet rendering can be used for accessibility and, and so forth. Um, so uh, we also started by including interrupt profiles. Um, so the, the idea was that it's kind of a vertical path uh, within this overview. So I started with the decentralized Dutch, the Dutch decentralized identity profile, uh, interrupt profile, sorry. Um, so you see these blocks are colored blue. Uh, and I also started with the areas interrupt profile but you see, I didn't get uh, too far yet. Uh, so would really uh, love your input on that too. Um, I guess I'll, I'll show the, the documentation. Um, and uh, so this is the accompanying uh, documentation uh, with basic stuff and an introduction of the model. And then for each layer we have uh, in, in the overview, we have an explanation of what should be included into that layer, uh, what technologies uh, belong to it. And then for each technology belonging in there, uh, we give an overview of, um, yeah, of, of some basic characteristics such as which standardization body uh, made the standard uh, when the last version was published, um, a link to the, to the standard, and uh, what technologies it is competitive to. So for example, for decentralized identifiers, uh, these are competitive to other identifiers like link secrets, for example, and um, they are compatible with the, the DIT, DIT uh, workflow that I just showed. And we do that for, for each of these technologies. Um, oh, and we give uh, a small explanation on uh, what the technology is trying to achieve, and maybe even uh, well, pros and cons maybe should not uh, be in here, but that's uh, something to be discussed. And so, actually, the further I scroll down, the emptier it will get. Um, it's been a lot of work, and I think it will also benefit the the quality enormously if just other people uh, start contributing to this work. Um, so that's also uh, partly why, why I'm here today. Um, at this moment, are there any questions or first thoughts maybe? A brief comment. Uh, my first thoughts are is this is a really, really good resource I think for people who are you know, starting fresh in the ecosystem and, and getting a good lay of the land. And um, 
at least getting an introduction to a lot of topics that they can then, you know, conduct further research on and, and more, you know, an analysis and comparisons and all that stuff. So I, I think this is a really valuable resource in that sense. Um, I have a, a question to follow that up with, uh, kind of touching on what you just said there um, about uh, being open to and, and eager to receive contributions from others. Um, what is what are your plans for this? Is this something that you intend to continue working through, uh, continuing to update as uh, inevitably we see more and more things changing and, and evolving? Yeah, so uh, thanks, uh, first and foremost. Uh, and then to answer your question, um, well, we have we have a Git repo uh, that we that people can just fork and uh, contribute to. Um, but I think this will always be a, a living document, right? Because like you say, um, uh, there's new standards coming out, new versions of standards coming out. So uh, I would really like to keep working on this, um, but even to get like to a first, final version, uh, I, I could really already use the contribution. And then I hope that this uh, updating will also uh, follow through both my uh, own efforts, but also the contributions. I guess I'll, I'll briefly comment a little bit further. Um, so models and, and kind of giving these overviews is something that I think we kind of do a bit on a cycle within the community. Um, we go through a, a phase where we we gather a lot of information, we gather a lot of details, we encapsulate it into a model, and then uh, we you know call it good or done for at least a little while, and then uh, a little time passes, and then we need to go back and update the models, and, and we just go through this cycle over and over again, um, which is I think appropriate again for an evolving community where um, you know we're we're learning more and more about uh, what we're looking for, what the you know, market needs, um, what our customers need, um, all that stuff. Um, but uh, I, I will say as a developer, um, uh, where I am first and foremost a software engineer, having the ability that uh, to have a, a Git version controlled version of these sorts of uh, overviews is actually really appealing to me. Um, so this is in, for my taste and preferences, at least having it in this sort of a format um, is something that is quite interesting and uh, I hope we can version it a little bit more uh, uh, discreetly, a little bit more accurately than some of our, our model uh, efforts in the past, I guess. So uh, I like this, I think this is cool. Um, see her. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, were you gonna say something else? I felt like I interrupted you, maybe. No, no, that's, I, I kind of trailed off, but yeah, that's all I really had to say there. Thanks, yeah, I'm, I'm a, uh, my background is also in uh, computing science, so I have a, uh, I, I like uh, that stuff too. <laughs> um, okay, so maybe I'll just switch back to the presentation. Um, well, my my oh my next question would be, um, um, so do you, yeah, what are your first thoughts? So Daniel, thanks for for giving that uh, first thought. Uh, are there any other first thoughts or comments? I have a question. This is Claire. So in the first slide, I think you mentioned you had a question. What about MDocs versus VCs, verifiable yeah. credentials, et cetera? How often do you get questions of that nature? Uh, quite often, I think. Uh, so typically we present uh, all kinds of credentials there are uh, credential formats there are there are and then uh, yeah the natural question arises uh, but what's the difference and why should I pick this one and why should I pick that one um, so not per se uh, about mdocs versus verifiable credentials but within that space of um, yeah of uh, variance thank you and, and one of my I get that question and one of my favorite responses is that if you exchange DIDs with a person, then you mutually authenticate. And so it, it's um, possible to know who is that other party. Whereas with if I'm showing my mobile driver's license to another entity, I may not be aware who is that other entity. Is it real or not? Is it fake or not? 
Yeah, right. So, so I, I think you mean that you should also authenticate your verifier, right? Right. And, and that's that's more my um, my high level. And you could, of course, it depends on the implementation. But my high level takeaway is that the mutual authentication, cryptographic authentication verification is more implicit with, with DIDs and exchanging a DID document and, and using VCs as opposed to the current MDL models that I'm seeing out of AMBA. And that's the um, American Association of Motor Vehicles. Yeah, mutual authentication. Thank you, Kalia. Yeah, right. So maybe this is also a nice thing to, to add to the documentation, right? So what are the, the benefits or uh, how do they compare in, in this uh, sense? Yes, so I think that's uh, that's a nice comment. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, if there's no further questions for me, uh, I will start asking you questions, um, such as, uh, is this relevant to you? And with you, I mean, uh, you as a person, but also you uh, as your company that you're working at, uh, or you as the Diff Interop Working Group. Um, so please, uh, is, it, uh, is it relevant to you? It's also okay uh, to say no, by the way. I would rather work on uh, something uh, mm -hmm. relevant than, than not, otherwise I, think, I switch. I think what, I mean, I, at first I thought it was just a diagram, like there are many diagrams in our community. And then you started like clicking buttons and different flows went through the diagram. I was like, oh, Okay, it's like a smart diagram. And that seems really, um, you know, for some of us who pay attention a lot and sort of understand the differences or like understand which things go with which things in which layers, but most people don't, right? And it's not obvious. And even those of us who sort of understand that get confused. So. That was really, and also like where you were going in terms of different interop profiles and, you know, making them different colors. I think that's, that could be really helpful. Um, you know, I, I still, I'm sad our community has so many choices because it's making it hard to get adoption, but at least getting clear about what different communities choices have been made is could be really helpful. Good to hear. Thank you, Kalia. Um, can I also ask you a follow up question? Uh, namely, so how do you see the continuation of this work? Yeah, I mean, um, the, I don't know. I mean, it's you know, one of the things that this interop group has done is sort of like is, you know, is people have done work outside the group and then sort of contributed to the group after it's done, like the map of all the standards that somebody did. Um, that's all like them interlinked. Um, so that's one possible path. I think, you know, it's, I'm I'm stepping down as chair, so maybe it's better to ask other current chairs <laughs> more than me. But. Thanks, uh, uh, Daniel. Um, I don't have fully formed thoughts on this yet, so this this might come out a little rough. But um, I guess, like Kalia said, like. These are certainly diagrams that the Interop Working Group has kind of hosted in the past, at least as a place for people to talk about these diagrams after they've created them, you know, off doing their own thing as opposed to being a direct output from uh, some efforts from the Interop Working Group. Um, uh, so that's, I guess, me talking with my Interop chair hat on. If I take that hat off and then put on my other hat of being a developer, of being a, a a software engineer in the space and being a team lead and working with younger developers in the space, uh, what I would want to see out of something like this is, is being able to use it as, uh, you know, introduction materials for people who are new to the space 
gives them like this is all the stuff that's going on right now um and this is where we are in it even if we're not necessarily focused on uh such and such use case that another facet of the industry is is particularly focused on uh using it as a you are here sort of uh guidepost i guess um i find that to be really valuable and really difficult to describe and visualize without the help of these sorts of, of diagrams being present in the ecosystem. Um, I think one thing that I would really like to see out of this is um, like uh, how we can contribute, I guess, like what areas are lacking. You've gone over some of that today, of course, already. But then like on a more like technical level, like what steps do we need to follow to pull up the diagram and make additions, uh, make changes, and then get those committed back to the the diagram, the overview, the main project. Um, so that's the kind of information I'd be interested in. I, I would like to be able to, for instance, um, you know, point somebody on my team to this repo and say, uh, we know some about this and we can contribute some more information here. Um, take care of it. And hopefully without needing to, you know, directly contact anybody from TNO or anything like that, be able to make a meaningful contribution um, and, and have all the resources available to them to make that contribution. That would be uh, uh, particularly compelling to me, I think. Uh, that sounds great. So uh, if you, uh, if you would, would uh, send someone uh, to my repo, uh, uh, maybe I should... Um explain a bit better how to contribute. So I have it shortly um, uh, explained here, but it would be so great if, uh, if you would do that. Uh, so basically it's just um, the, the documentation is just a markdown file. So that's just something, um, yeah, you can just, you know, you can for the repo, uh, alter this markdown and it will, uh, and it will work basically. Uh, so the, the image is a little bit more difficult it's uh, used, it's generated um, using Dryo. Not sure if you're familiar with that, uh, with that tool, but then you have to export it, right? Like uh, you have to export uh, a word to PDF, you have to export it to HTML. Um, is that enough information for now on how to contribute? Um, I think that's certainly in the direction that I was thinking of. Um, so the, the link that I have to the project is different from the one that you're currently looking at. So if, you, yeah. if I could get that, that'd be great. Yeah, of course. Yeah, sorry. I just uh, migrated it to our official uh, Tino uh, SSZ lab uh, group. Okay. So that's uh, why it changed. OK. Uh, thanks, Daniel. So that's also something maybe that can, uh, if uh, maybe it's a bold question, but that we can post it um, under a, a diff kind of as a diff kind of model. I mean, that's something that I'm certainly interested in. Um, I think, you know, that, that's just my opinion, of course. So kind of asking around, I think would be appropriate. But um, yeah, that, I think. This is of interest to me, at least. Good to hear. Um, yeah, so maybe we can also discuss what the what the next steps uh, then are if we want to do something like that. So maybe you first want to uh, discuss a bit more uh, with your other uh, co-chairs, um, but maybe you can shed some light on how this process would uh, would go. Uh, Clea, you've got your hand up. Did you? Yeah, I mean, I had a question about the diagram. So I don't want to sort of off topic from where you were going, but no, um, go ahead. Maybe you can bring it up again. Yeah, sure. So we can look at it. Um, um, it was interesting to see that you put, um, you chose to put Chappie up up in the top like I often think of it as like in the same category as SAOP and didcom um so it's just like a 
like I'm not like there it's not that there's a right or wrong way but I'm just I'm intrigued by that choice there's also things that I see that kind of people have worked on with Chappie like the VC API that also might be considered in the the connection layer so yeah know. that's yeah uh, that's uh, I, I can understand uh, your your confusion in this one maybe it should be in layer two um, so this is really why I need uh, some experts you know to look over this and and tell me uh, what is wrong and what is right and what I'm missing um, so now I know that I have to look into Chappie again and then uh, I'll probably come to the same conclusion as you uh, just did, I guess. Um, so thank you for that. It's like there, it could also be that there's like another box in the peer-to-peer -peer and it's like wallet invocation, right? Like how do you get to the wallet that that you're interacting with, right? Like that is, a critical challenge that if we don't solve will be solved for us by apple and google and fido <laughs> yeah yeah that's um, not desirable <laughs> and and it's actually this we're at this in this next six to 12 months we're at a critical juncture where good widely adopted solutions that allow for wallet choice are going to be like a kind of make or break for whether we can achieve decentralization in the long run. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's maybe a box to add you uh, you said here. Potentially, yeah. Yeah. Or, or is it an in-between thing? You know, like... Uh, <laughs> You know. Yeah, it's hard. I, I know. I, I used to have lots of things in between. And then I was like, I'm going to put them into uh, some level. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, but, but we should figure that out because maybe there is some interlayer uh, technologies uh, that, that just don't fit, fit into one box. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's something we should explore. Also the scoping of these layers. So why is one thing in this layer and another thing is not? Uh, I think it would be good if we can be very oh. concise. Uh, Issuance yeah. protocol, I guess, is might be where VC API goes. But then is it, you know, I don't know. That's why, I mean, it could be that this, this, this is like, because we've had a conversation amongst the chairs about updating the whimsical diagram. And maybe it's better to look at that whimsical diagram and work with this because it's in GitHub. It's editable in GitHub. Is that what you, what I understand? No, unfortunately not. Um, oh. I started out with whimsical, but it, yeah, I just, it, it was very uncomfortable for me to use. Uh, so I just went back to Dryo. Um, so it is okay. like an applet or, or in the browser, you can edit it. Um, yeah, oh, but not okay. directly. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, back to the thread. Back to what, sorry? You, I interrupted the line uh, of thing you were going down, so. Yeah, yeah, right. So um, I guess that was, um, towards Daniel, uh, maybe like, uh, can you describe the general process of getting this to be a diff model example? Uh, that is a good question. Um, I think where we would need to start is with uh, the, some additional conversation between uh, myself and I guess uh, the other chairs. Um, so I think that's, you know, layer zero. Um, and then from, there, I think that conversation would need to be started with uh, uh, Lamari and some of our other diff representatives to see what that process would look like. But I, I think it could be, you know, once that decision has been made, I don't know that it would be much more complicated than uh, a repo transfer on GitHub. But yeah. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah. 
let me see if I had any other. Um, yeah, I think that that's it for my questions. Maybe my colleagues have something to add at this point. Uh, no, not for me. No, uh, Peter, something that I missed? Uh, no, nothing that uh, comes to mind right now. Okay. Oh, okay, I have a qu practical question, which is how I know I like I don't fully understand how Tiana works. All, you know, there's Me different neither. movies, but um, how long are you working on this project for? And like, what's your runway? Okay, so that's uh, that's quite difficult for me to answer uh, because uh, I actually started out doing this for a customer and then it was very um, kind of shaped towards uh, and around uh, this MDL and MDoc stuff uh, because it was for the Dutch driving license uh, issuer, let's say. Um, and then, but of course, uh, I, I already got like a lot of information from developing that for them. Uh, so then it just took, uh, well, less time to make it neat and to make it more generally applicable. Uh, so I couldn't give you like a number of hours that I've worked on this per se, um, but also um, Tino is uh, kind of weird in that sense because we work on multiple projects at the same time. Well, not at the same time, but in your week, you divide your hours across uh, projects, basically. Uh, so yeah, it, it goes a bit slower and spread out more over, over the weeks, let's say. Um, does that answer your question? Kind of. I mean, is... Um... Like what I'm hearing is that this is a part of your ongoing work and you don't really have like a, a cliff where you're going to stop working on it. And like, I was just trying to, like some people come to us and they're like, here's my thing. I have to go, like they're leaving, you know, they don't have any more attention for it because their time is out. But it sounds like you, this is an ongoing project for you and there isn't like a cliff of when you won't be giving it attention yeah uh, so uh, i would like to continue giving it attention uh but i did get like the clue that i shouldn't you know uh, uh investigate all these things myself uh okay. and just involve other people um so i won't be like diving into each and every standard uh by myself again right so um yeah 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 Maybe it's also good to note that uh, Tino does have a continued interest in uh, SSI. And as you can see, we're also here with uh, multiple uh, colleagues. So this is definitely something uh, uh, in general, SSI is a topic we will be continuing with and uh, you'll be seeing us. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, Vincent. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm uh, driving right now, so not camera. Um, I'm um, uh, a bit puzzled because my technical knowledge isn't uh, very deep, but I'm uh, on this topic for pretty practical reasons. Uh, in the Netherlands, we are uh, working with the NEN uh, uh, Institute for Standardization of uh, I, uh, Authentication in Healthcare. And I was wondering, we're right now uh, following the European regulation about uh, digital identities, and it's uh, for now up to, on some level it's pretty vague. And we wanted to uh, like standardize how to uh, to uh, give credentials, how to uh, give to credentials to different uh, ident identity wallets. So I was wondering. Is this work uh, focused on the uh, interoperability between uh, wallet solutions, so, so identity wallets, so the credentials can be transferred from one wallet to the other, or uh, is it also usable for if I wanted to uh, hand over credentials for healthcare providers, for example, 
so I can use one system to provide it to different solutions, different wallets. Um, so to the, the, the first option uh, is, is not the case, I think, with this overview. Uh, so okay. we're not, um, tr yeah, we're not um, making wallets. It's themselves interoperable. It would be nice if they all follow the same intro profile, but there's also yeah, a lot of different technologies, emerging technologies that you don't want to like push to the side right away. Um, so I don't think that's the case. And for the latter uh, thing you described, um, I think you will be interested in our Tino Easy Gateway. So that actually allows you as an issue, issuer or a verifier uh, to uh, issue uh, or verify a credential to a holder or from a holder um, and it's wallet independent. It's kind of like a Molly or Agen or Stripe for wallets. Um, is that something you would be interesting uh, interested in hearing more about? Yeah, I think because there's now there's one example you uh, used, and it's it's like the the SEDN wallet of, uh, now called Irma or Yifi, yeah. and uh, we we're uh, cooperating with the Ministry of Healthcare by uh, handing out uh, uh, credentials for care uh, providers, care persons, <laughs> uh, for different kind of wallets. And we try to select uh, a standard way of providing these credentials to whatever wallet in the future will be used. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so I think that is the case. Yeah, so maybe you can uh, contact my colleague Peter, who's also in the call. Peter, maybe you can share yeah. your um, your email address or, or, or something like that, uh, because he, yeah, he cool. made this uh, easy uh, gateway. Yeah, thanks. I will copy paste it if it's in the chat, uh, Peter. Is that possible? Maybe uh, he's away for a bit, but uh, you can also contact me and I will... Uh, I will uh, forward you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Oh, he, he already I've, sent his. Uh, I've his added email. it uh, to the chat, yeah. but I'm on my mobile phone, so I couldn't uh, unmute while I was typing. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Peter. Thanks. Any other questions, remarks? Uh, Micah, is this something that we can kind of just like share openly with people um, widely just to ask them to contribute to it or I kind of how yeah, do you think please. about that? Yeah, yeah please. Uh, yeah, so uh, the new link is in the, in the chat uh, mm -hmm. and that would be great. We're also posting like a blog about it sometime soon um, and uh, yeah, just asking that question like please contribute and uh, here's the GitHub. So that would be great. Okay, great. I'll let people know. And it's also useful because the hackathon that we're pulling together, it's also, there's an educational aspect. So we're pulling together resources and overviews that might be useful for people. So this is actually really great. So I can share this as well. Great, thanks. Okay, then if there's no more other questions, I think Vincent's hand is still up from the previous question. Uh, I'll give it back to Daniel. Oh, sorry. Cool. Thank you very much, Micah. And thank you everyone else from Tino. Uh, appreciate the presentation. Appreciate the work that you've put into uh, the overview as well. I think that's, uh, again, an excellent resource. Uh, and hopefully we can uh, see where we can take it next. Um, I think with that, We'll go ahead and give 10 minutes back to everyone. Thank you very much. Sounds good. Thank you for having me and uh, have a great day. You Thank, well. you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Micah. Thank you. Bye-bye.